Good evening and welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air, bring you information about your library and your community. And this evening I have Stacy Peterson from our programming department joining us and we're going to tell you about a lot of the great programs that are coming up in the next couple of months. Hi Stacy. Hey Trisha. <laughs> well, both of us finally got a minute to pause in between the mad planning and publicity for all these great things. Yeah, but <laughs> a breather finally, yeah, a short just, one. Just sit here for half an hour and talk. <laughs> we have so many things going on and while we have tons and tons of programs for children, mm -hmm. we're going to talk a little bit more today about some of the programs that adults may be more interested in as well as some family events. Yeah. So what, what's our first one we have coming up? Well, I think ongoing for the month of October, a great, more of a family oriented thing that we mm -hmm. have going on at the main library is we've got the Illinois Art League doing their member show uh, on display in the exhibit hall in our gallery. And it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The Illinois Art League is one of our oldest central Illinois based arts organizations. Some of the members are professional artists, some are hobbyists in a variety of mediums. And we have several pieces down there from all these talented folks that we live with right in our community on display for the month of September. So we encourage people to come down and see that anytime the main library is open. So yeah. six days a week until six o'clock at night, not on Sundays. And Saturdays, bring, bring the kids down, free parking, and just enjoy yeah. some of the artwork. Yeah, if you haven't taken your children to see art, this is a great way to do it because it's free and you can go upstairs to the children's room afterwards. And it's a great, short, easy introduction to viewing art for, for children. And even if you yourself don't know much about art, this is a great way to get kids kind of used to the idea of what you do when you see art. And then you can work on to bigger things. Yeah. Maybe a good prep trip before we uh, get our new museum open. <laughs> That's a good um, idea. And you yeah. know, and the art really spans all kinds of things. You've got very little abstract in that show. So for people mm -hmm. who maybe find the art experience a little intimidating, it's a really nice way to get introduced to that. And they have they have a, a member down there, she's 102 years old, and she's still creating art. I mean, it's just kind of incredible to go and see the pieces that we have on display. Yeah, it is, mm -hmm. it is. And we've got all the way till September 27th to finish seeing that one. Correct. Right, Correct. okay. And then we have well, Dollar we, Day Boys? Well, Dollar Day Boys is a little bit later. That's October oh. 1st. That's okay. also at the main library. Um, we've got a gentleman named Bill Jamerson. He was with us, I want to say, last In the spring. fall spring, came by mm -hmm. and gave a presentation at North. He was so good, we're going to have him back again. But he presents an hour-long program on the Dollar a Day Boys, which were part of the Civilian Conservation Corps. Um, along with the WPA, the Works Progress Administration, the CCC mm -hmm. were really instrumental in a lot of the public projects that we see mm -hmm. all over the United States. And, and that can be anything from murals and post offices to uh, structures in city parks. And in this case, he's talking about men who planted trees. And Bill Jamerson does a wonderful job with music, with costume, mm -hmm. with film, with books. And he's gone out and extensively interviewed the living survivors of the CCC and as mm -hmm. well as their spouses and gathered these stories into what he's going to present at the main library on the first at two o'clock down in the auditorium. He's fantastic. He makes history very accessible and very entertaining. Mm -hmm. And he's written a book, but he also has original songs and music. So he kind of does it all, author and yes. musician. And so you get to learn about this in a variety of, of ways. But we should remember that those boys that went with the CCC are the World War II generation, and there's not many of them left. No. And so if you're fortunate enough to have someone in your family still surviving who served in the CCC, this is a good introduction to that and a good chance to get those stories down before they're gone. And actually, the, the picture we're showing on the show here today is my dad. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. We have that wonderful personal we, connection. Yeah, and, and my, my dad, this picture that we're showing of my father was out in Montana. And he actually, I think, worked on a state park and planted trees. And that's what so many of these were, were state parks and mm -hmm. lodges. And I believe Starved Rock was built by the CCC. I think there's a monument out front. So it's a lot of those yeah. big lodges and things that we still treasure today and now are, you know, getting older but in good repair and we're still enjoying them now. What a wonderful thing that was for our country. So Well, and for those exciting. boys, you know, it's yeah. interesting because you mm -hmm. can go through a town park and sit in a shelter house and not think anything of the construction of it. And then once you learn the story about the men 
who joined as a way to better their families, but as, as a kind of an added benefit, and what Bill Jamerson will tell you is, uh, the one thing that these men really loved was getting three square meals a day, as much as they could eat, and really delicious meals. We're not talking about rationed food like yeah. men in the army. These are guys who had to build, and, and um, time and time again, the stories that came to him were a lot about the food that was served to them. You'll never look at some of these structures the same way again once you learn about the history behind them. Right. It was it was a program that saved a lot of young men who couldn't find work. Their families were starving. They were starving. They they got an opportunity to work and the dollar a day thing was the money was sent home to their family. They sent home a dollar a day. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of families that saved them during the depression. I, I know it yeah. certainly did in my my father's family's case, so oh and gosh. and such wonderful experiences. But then the other thing that it did was so many of those young men then served in World War II, but because they had lived that sort of regimented life and worked as teams, that's one of the reasons that our servicemen were so well prepared. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, after Bill Jamerson. Well, before then, Bill Jamerson, we've right. got a couple of things. We've got um, following on the popularity of our Thursday food film festival that we held in the summer. We are going to do travel on Thursdays for the next four months. We're going to change up these film series every few months to kind of coincide with different things going on in the community. Uh, but starting on the third Thursday, which is, I want to say it's the 19th, but I have to look at a calendar, um, <clears throat> at 1.30 at the North Branch, we're going to go to France, we're going to go to the Montmartre Department of Paris, and we're going to go see Amelie. And I have to admit that when uh, I was picking films for this series, mm -hmm. I was a little bit selfish because this is one of my favorite films. <laughs> and it's very fun. It's very representative of this area of Paris. And so many people got into the rhythm of coming to the North Branch on Thursdays at 1.30 to, see a, to yeah. see a movie. And they said, well, why are you stopping it? And I said, well, summer's over and a lot of people are going back to school. So let's do it once a month. And I'm, I'm excited to welcome all these people back. So we're going to do Amelie in September. And if I could, I would show Amelie four times, but I think people would get bored. So in October, <laughs> we're going to do Seven Years in Tibet with Brad Pitt, a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I wanted to throw in a variety. So in November, we're going to do the Buena Vista Social Club. So we're going to go to Cuba, but it's also going to be a documentary style. And this film really brings in both music and the lives of the musicians as well as Cuban culture. When it came out, it was kind of groundbreaking, especially given that so many people couldn't visit Cuba, can't visit Cuba. And now it's even more poignant because many of those musicians have since died. Oh. So it's really, uh, it really stands for a time in history, music, and culture. And then our last movie, which really isn't a destination movie, but it's a journey movie, is Up. And it's the Disney Pixar film. So I think that that's kind of a... It's a film that resonates with everybody at all different ages. Uh -huh. So that'll be starting the third Thursday of September at 1.30 at the North Branch. That'll be great. And all free. All free. And on the great big screen, which is, some oh, people might man. say, why bother to go to the library? I can watch this at home on my big TV. Your big TV oh, and your surround sound like are still not as good as our big screen. <laughs> And, and our digital projection yeah. and the sound is wonderful. There's so. something to be said about sitting yeah. in a communal movie experience. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's one thing that we're going to definitely kick off in September. We have another thing that we're kicking off in September we're very excited about. Music in the Mackenzie, also in the yes. same room, uh, in the Mackenzie room of the North Library on September 23rd at 2 o'clock. We are starting the first of a monthly film series, or uh, pardon me, first of a monthly music series with the Stray Birds out of uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It's going to be live music for two hours, all free. And this particular group specializes in bluegrass, Americana roots music. It's uh, a young woman who plays the banjo and then a gentleman who plays the stand-up bass and another gentleman who plays the guitar. The stand-up bass player is also a banjo player. And the guitar player actually made a living traveling Europe as a performance fiddler. So they kind of came together in, in the most unusual of ways and we are very, very happy it, to it host It sounded them. like it when you read their backstory, they both were travelers. They and both I were. wondered if their name, the Stray Birds, came from that, that they were... The, the main musicians were both travelers, both songwriters, both just kind of 
making their living, you know, with their instrument and their voice and and their bicycles. And Maya their bicycles, rode her bike yes. all over Europe, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it'll be very interesting to see live music. We've had certainly had live mm -hmm. music before with mm -hmm. Little Rev and and uh, the Java Jews, but this will be a little bit different experience. And again, free two hours of music mm -hmm. with a break in between family friendly it's going to be really a yeah. nice event to and anxious on. to see performers that have been street musicians and have such a, a long resume of performing in all these different places for live audiences people who probably weren't really there to see them and they yeah. were able to capture their attention i think that brings something very different when you've got that kind of background. so I think so too. It's a different musical performance. It's a different interaction with the crowd. Um, they definitely learn to anticipate anything. And they, yeah. I see that there's a lot of flexibility in their performance. And of course, our website has a connection. The library mm -hmm. website has a connection to clips of their music. Yeah, you can get a preview. Oh, and the music's wonderful. It's mm -hmm. really well done. So, mm -hmm. you know, we encourage people to go and visit that and get a little familiar with it before. Yeah, and they, they do have CDs out, right? They do, and they'll yeah. have them for sale yeah. with um, a portion of those sales going to our friends of the Peoria Public Library group. We're right. very, very happy about that. Yeah, our performers are always so generous with our, our friends group. Yeah. So it's nice because it fun for the people that come, but also, you know, help support future programming. Yeah, do yeah. a little bit of do-gooding yeah. in an afternoon of music. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and what else do we have coming up? Well, uh, that kind of concludes September. October, we are going to start some other exciting things. In the gallery, we have a woman who's native to Peoria, <clears throat> really Washington, Illinois. Her name is Kay Herbst Helms. Mm -hmm. Most recently, she was involved in an exhibit at Lakeview Library curated by Chani Lyons, who's a longtime friend of the library and, and somebody who's very prominent in the local yes. arts scene and familiar yes. with female artists especially. But Kay uh, worked for many, many years at Forest Park Nature Center, moved up to Mankato, Minnesota, and upon her retirement, decided that she'd like to do some photography. And she'd been kind of dabbling in that. Mm -hmm. And what came of that dream and that interest is what we are going to actually have on display for the month of October. Um, one day she was talking to some friends of hers and she realized that she wanted to photograph hands and one of the people that she was speaking with was a retired nun. And Kay was fascinated with the fact that these women use their hands in so many different ways mm -hmm. and the nun explained to her that it's interesting that as we age our hands change, the, the, certainly the appearance of our hands change, but yet they still remain beautiful in many different ways. Yes. So Kay decided, she was struck, literally struck by divine inspiration, and decided to photograph the hands of 13 retired nuns. And in some cases, this was very significant. Um, the nuns use their hands for work. Certainly one of them is a sign language interpreter after mm -hmm. losing her own hearing learns sign language and teaches it to others. Another woman specializes in the art of rose mailing, you know, the painting on the plates oh, yes. that looks very yes. Scandinavian. Yes. So she actually has pictures of these women who are doing their, their trades, their hobbies and their professions. And then she also noticed the beauty in women who don't necessarily use their hands for, you know, for making money. So that is part of the series that she actually is going to be bringing with A us. Fascinating subject. Fascinating yeah. subject. Yeah. And then from there, um, she developed a series of hands of rural farmers of southern Minnesota. Uh, she was struck with the connection of people who collectively do the same thing but are so very, very different but use their hands to provide for so many more people. So she found rural farmers and is going to actually juxtapos juxtapose the two exhibits together at the library. It's called Of Heaven and Earth. And it will be on display the entire month of October, which is um, Arts Humanities, National Humanities Month as well. We're very happy for that. And the first Saturday in October, we're going to be hosting a reception for her. From well, that'll one to be three. wonderful. Great chance to meet the photographer. Yes. Which is often people don't realize that when you meet the person who created the work, you learn so much more about it and gain such an understanding of it. It's exciting to, to have the opportunity to do that. It is, and she's a very uh, accessible person. Having worked with the public for so many years at Forest Park, uh, she is she has a very nice way of explaining something that would not be easily accessible to others. And, and just her story of, of getting to know these nuns and inviting them into her life and having them open up their lives to her is, is a really nice nice story that she can share with everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is great. And. Mm -hmm. 
In addition to the opening reception, you also will have a gallery walk, won't you? We will. The second or third, I'd have to look at the calendar. I believe it's the third Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And we will walk through all of the pieces of the gallery. And then we'll, it'll culminate in a visit to the Friendly Finds bookstore. We just had one led by Nancy Davis, the president of the Illinois Art League, last oh. week. And it was very, very well received. Nancy has an intuitive and familiar knowledge with all of the artists. And she was able to really tickle the crowd with kind of these fascinating little tidbits. So. Oh, yeah. That, that's a wonderful thing to do, too. Great, mm -hmm. great excuse to maybe go have lunch with a friend and then come down to the library and take the gallery walk kind of make an afternoon of it check it's a out great, some dvds yeah check out some dvds it's a great <laughs> great destination for for people to you know organize your day around it yeah is. and so i think we missed one september event isn't an international observe the moon night in <laughs> september 22nd september 29th last 29th. saturday of the month um ah. this is really fun we were invited to do this last year mm -hmm. uh if, if people in the area are not familiar with the observatory at donovan golf course mm -hmm. They have to go out and see what happens. Usually, I think they do it every Saturday night after dark. But this is actually International Observe the Moon Night. We will be out there with the wonderful volunteers who staff that machine. And we will be reading book re books related to the moon. And last year when we did this, we had so many families who came out. We had blankets on the floor. We had crafts for them. We had a whole stack of books. And we just sat and read as people went upstairs and literally observed the moon. It was it was really a joy. It's such a fun event. It's a free event. It is a family event. Right. And we just really enjoy being a part of that every single year. Yeah, my family always enjoyed, you know, just looking at the heavens at night. I still do. I fortunately live out where it's very dark and have quite a show any night that it's not cloudy. But there's also a website if people are interested and there's a map that shows all the places that are going to be observing. So you kind of have that that sense that you know of community that so many people are around the world are watching the moon that night and think yeah. about all the people that are looking at the moon and kids are so delighted when they you know can see the man in the moon or <laughs> and, the, and the wonderful volunteers there at Northmore Observatory are mm -hmm. so encouraging and they want to share what they do on a weekly basis it's yeah. It really is a thrill to be with people who are working with their passion and mm -hmm. they are very willing to be patient with you and help you and they'll move the telescope. It's just, it really is fun. Like you said, somebody like me, I live in central Peoria. I don't get to go out you, and see the you stars. Don't I don't see get it. that. There's too much light pollution. Yeah. Too much so light pollution. It's a treat. It's fun. And, people, you know, the kids get to stay up later. And it's it really is kind of a nice nice kickoff for fall before yeah. it gets too cold yeah. to go out and do that. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so, of course, October is also, I think we've gone through a lot of our things we have going on for adults, but in October we also have a lot of storytellers and we have our paranormal investigator. Well, October's Halloween, mm -hmm. so we have to be really aware of that. That's yeah, all, kind of we have a long list, all month long, all ages, all locations. All locations. A couple of special things that we have, we have noted ghost hunter and scholar and author Rob Conover is going to be coming and giving a presentation. Um, Monica Vest Wheeler, if you've been to any kind of history, mm -hmm. interactive event in the Peoria area, she's usually there telling stories. She's going to actually be telling stories on the 17th of October around the fireplace at the North Branch. Um, we've had a lot of PJ story times at the North Branch and I had never mm -hmm. seen it until a couple of months ago. And the kids literally show up in their pajamas seven o'clock the parents are thrilled because it's story time and then home in the car asleep bedtime yeah so put them right in bed right in bed the kids can wear pajamas to this it's going to start at mm -hmm. six they can wear their halloween costumes they can just come as they are we just yeah. want to see them and they'll be family friendly all ages we're not going right. to scare anybody yeah that's just, what there's there's a difference i i don't know if rob conover's talk will be scary right. or if monica vest wheeler's talk will but these family story times are definitely more on the silly. They are. And Monica's <laughs> definitely Halloween. going to be gearing more towards silly and fun. Yeah, so. silly and fun. And we also have um, a not so spooky story time at Lincoln Branch with um, everybody's favorite, Linda Lowry, who oh, is a so wonderful good. and an enchanting storyteller. And I, that one's early in the month down at Lincoln Branch. It but, is. And the teens, of course, love zombies. 
We have Project Zombie again coming up. Last year we made mm -hmm. Jello brains and mm -hmm. um, we had fake scars and yep. it was. We have a zombie survival class going on at McClure Branch. Yes. And I think that's ages 10 through 16 maybe. Perfect and they can go to class, apocalypse. learn how to survive the zombie apocalypse. But then at Lincoln Branch, the kids are going to turn each other into zombies and they're going to have a moan and shuffle contest. That will be perfect. So we need to practice up there, Stacy, and see if you can. <laughs> I do. I need to go back and watch old thriller videos, I yeah. think, and maybe pick yeah. up some moves. Well, that's the other fun thing is after they see who can moan and shuffle, they're going to watch book trailers for zombie books, which oh, is fun. Man. And that's... That's something some people may not be aware of, that there are book trailers now right. that on the internet, and you can actually see almost like a little video kind of thing of, of different new and exciting books and decide, do I want to read that or not? And I don't know about so. you, I love trailers in a, in a movie yeah. theater. I oh, mean, yeah. I, there's something really fun about seeing those snippets. So for mm -hmm. books, it really can't get any better than that. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, give you an idea of what you want to read now. Exactly. Yeah. But of course we have a lot of things for the little ones too. We have a lot of things. I know there's a princess, pumpkin princess story time where the little right. girls can come in their favorite princess costume and do princess trivia and uh, have a princess parade and that one's at Lincoln Branch. But all of our other locations have either Halloween parties or story times for the little ones because they all want more than one night to wear that costume. They do. And so the library gives you a perfect <laughs> chance to try that costume out before the big night, before trick or treat. But and you know, and in addition to that also in October, and I know that you're going to have um, this gentleman on as a guest, but the director of the Four Directions Healing Center, Adam Danner, yes. will be presenting a three-part series on Native American history, mm -hmm. culture, and customs. And he, if you haven't had the chance to see him, he is just fascinating. Their organization really does a lot to preserve the integrity of the Native American experience. So through his lecture on kind of introducing people mm -hmm. to the culture, to learning about Native American cooking and preparation, and then music and dancing and drum circles, we're going to be offering that through the month of October as yes, well. Yes, and as you said, we are going to have him on this show, so we'll get a more in-depth look, but it's mm -hmm. good to make a note now of what those dates are, mm -hmm. and they're all at the North Branch, all the and North Branch. we can a, a kind of uh, get a global view of what they're going to teach because they, they talk about the beliefs, and as you said, the cooking, the culture, the dancing, mm -hmm. everything all, all together. So we'll get more from him. If you can't make it to the event, we'll be able to see him here in Information Please, which of course is on YouTube as well as That's right. on the air, so you can watch, go back and watch anytime on those things. Mm -hmm. But we have, have a craft, I know, make it, take it things for the kids. Always. We have those every month, and you can just look on the web calendar, of course, to find out when those are, or pick up our newsletter for kids, which is Kid Events. It lists every event we do for kids and families, mm -hmm. and it's all right there, and you can find out about it. It'd be great. What, can you give, I know you're working on 2013. Yes. Can you give us just kind of a sneak peek of what might be going on <laughs> next year? Sure, we've got a few things um, in the works as it is. Of course, I'm continuing the music in the McKenzie series. I have about three quarters of the year booked already. And uh, it, that's been very exciting. We're gonna have still continuing with the small group tradition. I do have a couple of solo artists coming in. Uh, the farthest that they're traveling so far, I'm talking to some people on the East Coast, mm -hmm. um, some people regionally, St. Louis and Chicago. I've got a larger band that I'm trying to accommodate. They're called The Dirty Kitchen. I don't know exactly what a dirty kitchen implies, but their music is very, very jumpy and fun. <laughs> so Music in the McKenzie is going to continue. We're also going to be bringing in a film series before oh, it was Broadway. And in conjunction with Peoria Civic Center, they're bringing um, plays like Billy Elliot, Mary Poppins, um, mm. different things that were probably books before or movies before they became stage plays. So we're going to be showing the original movies. So West Side Story is going to be one of the films that we're going mm. to show as part of this series. Billy Elliot, you can actually see the inspiration for the stage experience. So that'll be one thing that we're going to do. Um, we're going to have a Mother's Day Film Festival. Well, that'll that's, be fun. That's going to be Mondays, I think, in May. But not to outdo the mothers, we're going to also do a Father's Day Film Festival as well. Um, something that we just recently started was an armchair travel, traveler series. And we've had special guests come and speak of their experience in Ireland, in New York City. We're going to continue that as well into 2013. 
it's a wonderful way to become very familiar with places that maybe you've already visited, but if you thought, man, I've always wanted to go to New York City, talk to the people who've actually been there who are kind of in the know. It's it really, it's really fun. It's so much better than sitting down with somebody who wants to show you their vacation photos. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much more entertaining than that. So, you know, it, it's a very I think that's what experience. people worry about. Is this going right. to be like, you know, Gradient Irma's vacation slides? Right. Or watching somebody, you know, on the Maid of the Mist at Niagara Falls for 10 <laughs> minutes. No, it's going to, it's, it's a lot different, a lot more interactive with that. Um, so we do have some of those things coming up as well. In November, we have Family Read Night coming up, of course. Yes. We are going to have Julie Kay. She is... If you are not familiar with Julie Kay and her special brand of music. Very energetic. Very infectious. And she's going to be at the main library that night. I believe it's November 17th from 6 o'clock till probably 7. Free parking. Plenty of room for those double strollers in the elevator to come on down. Lots of space. <laughs> so we really encourage parents to come down with their families and enjoy family read night and, yeah, and kick it off be, with Julie. That'll be a great time. And it, parking is free Parking's after five. Free. Don't have to worry about that. Plenty of parking. Yep. Plenty of parking. I know one thing we've sort of neglected is sometimes we offer classes, and we do have this um, photography series coming up. We do. In October, where we have a couple of photographers who are teaching a series of three classes, and then at the end there's a contest, and you can find out all the rules and all that. But uh, I think you don't have to have been in the class to enter the contest, but it's called Portraits of Peoria. Correct. And it can be either people or landscapes or, and so many of us are carting around our, even our smartphones and right. the smartphones sometimes take even better pictures than the camera we bought a few years ago. So. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Well, you know, and, and also kind of the complete opposite, but also a class. I'm glad you brought that up. We, of course, have our computer open help sessions. That's been mm -hmm. hugely popular. But something that we're seeing more I think in the public are people going back to those original crafts whether it's embroidery yep. or cooking and one of our own if anybody had a chance to go to the gallery during the summer and mm -hmm. they saw the food creations made by Amber Lowry who was a guest on this show mm -hmm. Amber is in the middle right now of hosting a crochet camp mm -hmm. and she's engaging she's incredibly talented yes. and if anybody's ever wanted to learn how to crochet you know we encourage them to come and and take this class. There's a small registration fee. Just it's to only help. five dollars to, to just pay cover for the your materials. Yarn. You know, yeah, that's it. And we hope to continue this actually in uh, the spring. Also, we had something that just started yesterday, the 18th. City Dance of Peoria. They're coming down on Tuesday nights, and they are teaching hip hop and cheer dance in our auditorium to anybody, any teenager that comes in. This organization is a wonderful nonprofit. Oh, yeah. um, it's founded by local people. They do have a cap of 50 participants, and as you can imagine, it's it's wildly successful. Mm -hmm. So we ask that they call the programming department at 497-2120 with any questions or if you want to get your name on the list or more information. So, yeah. you know, we really well, have, Right now there's plenty of room. Right, right now there's plenty of room. Mm -hmm. But it is popular, and they do have a huge following. They they perform mm -hmm. down at the Lincoln Branch, and I tell you, kids were getting up and dancing along with them. So you can imagine how they they rock that auditorium pretty good. That'll, that'll be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. And are the parents welcome to come watch, or is this more leave no. your kid? Nope. The yeah. parents are. It's teenagers, so some parents are still working, but they can certainly come and watch. There's plenty of room for them, and this continues through the school year. So wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Stacy. I thank know you're busy. You. you got to get back to booking more things. That's right. <laughs> we gave you a lot of dates and a lot of information here. You can find all of it on PeoriaPublicLibrary.org or by calling the library at 497-2000, pick up passages, pick up kit events, or just stop in and ask someone at the desk what's going on. And you can find the exact details of all these programs. They're all free. They're all wonderful. Most of them are for the family. They're appropriate. And you have the added benefit of once you're in the library, you can check out all kinds of books, music, DVDs, uh, sign up to use a meeting room for your own special program, whatever. We're a community center, and we've got everything that you need. We'll see you next week on Information, Please.